Hi, X with the Apostles. This week we're looking at tradition and redaction criticism. Tradition and redaction criticism. Now, tradition criticism is the kind of criticism that looks at a source that a person uses in a text and see how it's been changed over time. And redaction criticism looks at the role of the editor, the person who redacted or edited the text, in changing that source. So you see how these two things are connected. You're reading this week books by people who are looking at the Old Testament or the Septuagint as a source for New Testament writers, and that is the major tradition we're going to look at and the major kind of redaction I want you to look for. But let me help you understand this a little better. Let's go to a genre you're probably, you may be more familiar with, a genre called hip-hop. Yes, hip-hop. Consider for a minute Will Smith's Getting Jiggy With It. I think I put the link where my finger is, but we'll see. I'm going to try to do that on YouTube. Okay, so go ahead and look at Getting Jiggy With It and come back to me. When you're back, let's talk about this Getting Jiggy With It. Are you back? Great. When you listen to Getting Jiggy With It, if you are of a certain age, you might immediately recognize that the, the hook or the musical line that undergirds Getting Jiggy With It comes from a different song, a song by Sister Sledge called He's the Greatest Dancer. And if you don't know that song, I'm going to now put that link here and you can go check it out and come back. Some of you might also recognize the na 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 as coming from Barquet's song, Sang and Dance. And now I'm going to put the link for Sang and Dance right here. Okay? Barquet's song doesn't sound anything like getting jiggy with it except for the na 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 which opens the song. So here Will Smith has already taken two traditions, Sister Sledge and Barquet, and redacted or edited them into his song, into his work. That's actually not unlike the way you do research, right? You look at all the different authors and all the different researchers and you connect them to the argument you're trying to make. Let's continue to look at getting jiggy with this in terms of tradition and redaction history. What other traditions are being redacted or edited into this text? Well, there's one line he uses, since I moved up like George and Wheezy. Now, if you're my age, you remember who George and Wheezy are and how they moved up. If you're not, go ahead and check this link out. It's to the opening of a show called The Jeffersons. This was one of the first African-American shows about a wealthy couple of African-Americans on television. George Jefferson was a successful laundromat uh, mogul and he and his wife moved up to the east side that is the east side of new york to deluxe apartment they said deluxe apartment in the sky a penthouse apartment so this was a big deal this was a rich black couple and of course it was a comedy dealing with all of the things that revolve around a black couple with money and nouveau being nouveau riche so um will smith is connecting somehow the moving on up theme of George and Wheezy to getting jiggy with it, right? So there's another tradition he's redacting into his piece and that comes from an African singer whose name was Sol Makosa and he wrote a song called Manu Dibango and that's going to be here if I can find it. And Manu Dibango, in turn, was sampled by a young man named Michael Joseph Jackson, now of blessed memory, who wrote, who kept that one in a song called Wanna Be Startin' Something, which if you're in your 20s, you probably don't remember, but if you're my age, you do. Well, when Will Smith says, Mama, ah, uh, Mama, sa, Mama, come closer, he is referencing Michael Jackson's Mama Say Mama Sa Mama Kusa, who is in term referencing Sol Makosa. So what you have is a tradition history as Sol Makosa's piece becomes Michael Jackson's piece and the tradition goes in different ways. We can talk about it in getting jiggy with it but then if you went to Rihanna's song um, uh, the, the song about the DJ she uses that same 
that same hook again in her most recent song about a DJ, um, Hey Mr. DJ, Turn the Music Up. Finally, this whole title, Getting Jiggy With It, is also a tradition history. The word jiggy in Will Smith's comes from the word jigaboo, which was a racial slur against African Americans. Now, why would Will Smith use a racial slur against African Americans in a song called Getting Jiggy With It? Will Smith's argument is he's trying to reimagine that term. He's trying to redact or edit the use of that term from a negative to a positive. So he's got this whole song, and if you know the lyrics of the, of the song, the song is all about his success and his rise to success from the projects to a place of great success, and he calls that rise getting jiggy with it, that is getting African American with it, which is to say this is what a real African American does. A real African American is successful. That's tradition used in a, in a particular way, redacted in a particular way, edited in a particular way. Remember, redact and edit mean the same thing. Edit, uh, edited or redacted in a particular way to make a different point. Well, what does this have to do with Acts of the Apostles? Well, there are lots of different traditions in Acts of the Apostles, right? Um, the two main streams of these are the use of Septuagint or Hebrew Bible. And you might see Septuagint or Hebrew Bible quoted Think about the way it is quoted in Acts chapter 2 by Peter in Peter's speech. Peter quotes Joel. So the question is, how is Peter, how is Peter's speech quoting Joel, and how is the author of Acts redacting or editing Joel in a particular way to make Peter's speech more powerful or more focused? A different way to look at tradition criticism is not just for quotations, but references. Think about Stephen's speech. Stephen doesn't necessarily do a lot of quotation, but he references particular persons in the history of Judaism and talks about them in terms of a salvation history. So how is Stephen's use of tradition redacted by Luke to make a point that Stephen is trying to make? Another kind of uh, tradition that is reused is the tradition that is actually in Acts. Consider the way in which Luke has a tendency to repeat certain stories. There's the story, for instance, of Peter and John healing the lame man at the temple. And we've seen that that same story is repeated with Paul and Barnabas heal healing the lame man in Lystra with almost the same actions. How is that story changed? How is the outcome of that story changed? And what is the redactor doing by putting that same story both in Peter's hands and in Paul's hands? You can argue, well, this is just the way it happened, but it's, it's one thing to say it's just the way it happened, but this author is writing, as he says, a clear narrative so that Theophilus will have a clear understanding of what's going on. So he's chosen what to add and what not to add, and he's chosen or she has chosen how to tell it. So what is this author doing by editing this text in such a way that these two narratives are clearly being set up as parallels? Or consider the way the author repeats certain stories. You have the story of Peter's conversion and Cornelius' acceptance into the Christian church in Acts 10. Well, that's told a couple more times up to Acts 15. How is the retelling of that story changing the story? How is the editing of that story or redaction of that story changing? So that, again, you're looking at a tradition that's being redacted in the story. Or look at, for instance, Paul's, um, Paul's conversion. How is Paul's conversion changed over time? How is that being redacted in the story? So all of those are ways in which you might look at tradition, and all of those are ways in which you might look at how tradition is redacted in the story. Now, I understand that your particular New Testament passage may not have that, and you can say that in your exegetical experiment. However, if you do have it, that may be a way into your exegetical experiment that you had not considered, and in any case, this is going to affect what you do on the forums next week. So, I want you to look at, in this week, not only what are the traditions, 
but what is being redacted? How is the author redacting those traditions? As the author of Luke Acts tries to tell us this story that she wants us to hear. I hope that's helpful, and I will see you in the forums. Take care.